I didn't even order a cheesecake. I ordered a milkshake. So, uh, two weeks prior to that, we ended the session on a cliffhanger where Edmont was bumbling down a hallway and stepped into the center of a gelatinous cube. And then the next week, uh, McDole had, I guess his sister-in-law was in town and they had to go to the cheesecake factory or whatever it was. Uh, Listen, there's a lot of cheesecake factory going on around here. And we're like, well, we're not just going to not have somebody start the session in the cube. So I just arbitrarily put Victor into the cube instead. And that was the previous session that we played. And yet, somehow, no one posted an RPG horror stories. How often does your DM make you start in the cube? I know, like, I even went on RPG horror stories every day, refreshing, like, F5, F5, F5. Sure, surely, didn't happen. Listen, kind of Brickard, I'm not going to post that wit unless I'm, if I'm not using my burner account, gosh. <laughs> uh, the important thing is we started somebody in the cube, and... We did. <laughs> Put your priorities it's, straight, people. It's a thought that counts. Today is Cube 2. GameCube boot up noise dot MP3. Uh, so you guys did mo most of this half of the dungeon. Uh, I'm not remembering now what a lot of these little scribbles that we've drawn here are. Oh, that's right. You uh, used the decanter of endless water and froze part of this hallway. That was a desktop oh, idea. <laughs> Those oh, are this, this is a fire. You can tell this is a fire because it's been labeled fire. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's very helpful. Thank you. And then they took this uh, magic canoe and they canoed their way across this subterranean lake. And then all of these shoals started moving as though they were a large creature moving under the water. Uh, two additional things. We do this things. in the middle of the night, too. So it's like we're on, like at two o'clock in the morning. Running around this stupid cave, yeah, something like that. Yeah, uh, two additional things we did. Two additional things for McDole's benefit. Uh, one, do not hop in the water. Water bad. Water bad. Okay. Why water, is water bad? Water freeze you. The water's magical and will instantly freeze anything that is not enchanted to not be frozen. It will make okay. an Edmund sickle. So uh, two. It will make an Edmund sickle. The, the second thing is, is over here, we picked up a magic basin that if you attach it and then look at it, it shows you the best version of the area possible. It's and not we were, a mirror. Don't look we at were, it. It's like, so like you, it, like, like, what can you do to get to this version? So like, oh, it's, so we were debating about whether it was cursed. So we're going to, we're going to find that out later because Genie's definitely installing it. I mean, I don't think it got thrown into this lake by accident. Like, this is a very strange place for that to end up, unless someone was like, this thing must never be used again. I was also, somewhere. No one will ever get it here in the beneath this freezing water. Also, this lake cannot possibly exist underneath our property. Oh, and also, we left a giant back that we're going to try and save. Uh, nah. I mean, like, we're kind of like... Like, there's, like, one or two of us that are kind of like, yeah, whatever, I'll save the giant, and then, then like, one or two of us is incredibly indifferent, and then, like, one or two of us is like, yeah, leave the giant to die. So we're basically split down the middle on that. We'll see what happens with the giant. I think we have, this Edmund have to be the have to be the tie-breaking vote on giant. Well, not yet. Because we don't actually know what's going to happen yet. What's going to happen immediately is rolling of initiative. Right. We we decided to go save Job. Brickard stopped because he's like, yeah, you're going to need Edmont for this. <laughs> I remember listening to that on like the on the VOD uploading uploads. So thank you very much for doing that, Treble. And also, um, did you delete? Did you delete my initiative, Doohickey? Oh no, I'm dead over there. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see. I need. I believe. Uh, Victor, are you on eleven? I believe that cliffhanger was roll oh, initiative, right? Okay. Is that is that where we left off? Yes. Uh, I just made you guys roll again because I couldn't remember yeah, if I you mean, I previously or not. Yeah. All, All right. Mentor right, uh, leveled up too. What is Orson's? Yeah, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be I like Orson uh, probably two leveled up to everyone cause... else. Uh, let me see. I gotta get Orson's stat block. Probably a good idea. 
can somebody please put Orson on? Tw- no, I'll do it. He, Orson's here. And I rolled a one for my initiative. Gross. That's fine. I missed all the XP from last week, so I'm bummed out now. Uh, well, don't die in this encounter, and you'll probably earn some for this week. Your blips are worth more now. As all Yay! of the shoals in front of you, because uh, one of you like were poking and prodding with them, to see if the it was a safe to navigate the canoe through. Well, the show the shoals themselves snake under the water, and you hear a splash from in front of you as a ferocious monster with a reptilian head emerges from the water and it looks like it's shaped out of the same rock as the cavern and covered in slimy green algae or mold and that's going to bring us to the top of the order uh first up we've got victor at 23 with orson on deck Okay, so uh, we're stuck in the boat with nowhere to go, right? Uh, you can jump in the water. Uh, okay, so we're stuck in the boat with nowhere to go. <laughs> can we can we see where the other shore is? So, th- to be clear, your canoe is like one square wide, like five feet across. So the two of you are sitting in the same five foot square. And there's just enough room for the six of you to be sitting in there. Okay. As far as the opposite shore. Is there any place we can safely get out of the canoe is really what I'm asking. You yeah, wouldn't be uh, able to see the opposite shore from the shoal line. Okay, and there's... We could potentially try and step on the... Like, is the shoal big enough for us to stand on, or are we stuck in the canoe? There are together? no shoals. The shoals are attached okay. to this ferocious monster that's now we, poked its head up out of the water. We do have 60 feet of light, currently. Uh, then you can probably see some of the shoreline... I've got 30 and then 30 feet bright, 30 feet bright, 30 feet dim. So that's probably what you can see. That's not too far. So how how fast... In order to move this... So uh, who is operating the oars? Whoever's operating the oars would have to be sitting in the center two spots. Uh, Victor and Orson Orr. Okay. So the way you would have to, if you wanted to move the canoe forward, you and Orson would both have to row at the same time. So you'd have to ready an action to row when Orson does, then wait for Orson's turn to also row. And that would advance the canoe, uh, let's say 20 feet. If only one of you is rowing, the canoe is just going to sit there and go in a circle. And so which, which specific square are we on with the canoe right now? Let's, let's do this. Yeah, we got like a token we can do instead. I need like a one by three square token. What's Trouble's yeah. idea? What are you doing, Trouble? That's what they have. They have those in the objects. Oh no, really? Yeah. Under components. They have they have rectangular objects, rectangulars in there. They've added so much. Because oh. I use it for like in, in in the Saturday game I was running, I would use it for their van. Nice. Where are they in the? Uh, well, I I can't look in the menu because it's grayed out for me. Blue rectangle. Yeah, that's that's it. I mean, technically it's a rectangular prism, but I'll let it slide. So we'll just put ours right there. All right, Professor. Uh, that's a little too big. Yeah, I was. Well, I, <laughs> I I enlarged it for the wrong size square. So there we go. That's roughly what your canoe is going to be. And then this uh, is just a representation of how you guys are sitting in the canoe. Yeah. Okay. So if we're basically in this square, I'm just I'm just seeing twenty feet would get us what five, ten, get fifteen. Shore. You could row to the shore, but you will be moving through this thing's threat range most likely. Okay. So question: Do we want to try and get to shore, or do we want to try and attack it and kill it in the water? I feel like Odysseus had to do this. <laughs> How did it work out I for think... him? Not well. I mean, Orson's right after you, and he's looking at you, waiting for you to just decide on what you want to do. It's going to require your action to row, whether you're ready now or either yeah. way, it uses up your action. 
Alright, so what I'd like to do is I'm thinking if Orson and I get to the shore, can I then use my bonus action to dash out of the boat? No, because by that point it'll be Orson's turn. You'll be rowing on Orson's turn, at which point you no longer have a bonus action. If you want a bonus action dash, you've got to do it right now. I don't think I can jump that far. Uh, no, that's you're 25 feet away or so. Yeah. So you need at least a 26 strength to do it. Um, and then like I'm a 15 foot strong. run up. Right. Yeah, without running start, it's actually like 50 strength, I think. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna for bonus action, we're going to. Have we had a have we had a long rest? We haven't had a long rest yet. Not since you've come in we had here. A short rest. We had a short one. I forget if a short rest. Gives me back my spell. It should. It does. It does, okay. Uh, so, okay, so bonus action, I'm going to Hunter's Mark this thing, and then I'm going to use my actual action with the horse and the road ashore. Okay, so bonus action, Hunter's Mark, your action is ready, an action. When Orson begins to row, you're going to row. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, so we've got Orson with Ekon on deck. All right, so you can so... move the canoe 20 feet in any direction. And it, that gets us, like, right to the... The shore, doesn't it? No, I guess it's on the shore. If we were here initially. So we were You could put yeah, the that... you could put the nose of your canoe right on the shore, but Yeah, that's what we're doing. The not without traveling through the creature's threat range. Yes, which we just did. So who's in the back of the canoe? Evie and Edmont. Man, I feel like I picked on Evie and Edmont a lot in this dungeon. We could just we could just flip it around and say <laughs> Genie and Ekon are in the back of the boat if you want. You can, but then I'm going to say you can only move the canoe forward 10 feet. And you're rowing backwards now. And not looking where you're going. <laughs> Sorry, Evie. Uh, so I will use a... Reaction here. Uh, yeah, Evie's closer to the thing. Evie, I've got a 14 to hit. That actually does not hit. Okay. So, as the canoe is moving through the water, I mean, you see this thing. Uh, it's in the process of snaking up and looming over. This head attached to this long snake-like neck. And it opens its mouth, and you see this jaw of rows and rows of just razor-sharp teeth. More like a fish than a reptile. And it lunges forward and snaps at you. You throw your weight backwards into Edmont just enough that the thing snaps shut inches away from your face so at this point uh ekon and genie mm -hmm. the nose of the canoe is now on the shore and that was orson's turn yep. orson it still has off. his movement and a bonus action left if he chooses to use it all right oh well, orson's uh, gonna get out of the canoe <laughs> yeah orson's gonna get out of the canoe he'll Do we get right anything through. else with the uh, light leaving yeah. the canoe? you can see that the shore and it's more of a sandy shore than a stony shore. Whereas you uh, di you uh, embarked from this kind of cave inlet over here where the stone just retreated down into the water. This is more like a subterranean beach which stretches forward when, with damp gray sand. The cave walls are, to your right-hand side are still pretty similar. So can Orson use his bonus action to pull the canoe further on shore, given no. that it's frictionless? He cannot. Bonus action is has to be very... It's You only have the bonus actions you are specifically given by features and such. Alright, so we got Ekon with green token on deck. Okay. So Ekon will move 5, 10, 15, 20... That's going to throw this out there. Abandoning the canoe to the giant sea monster seems like a bad idea. It's easy to pull. It's got no and friction. then not with my five strength. And then uh, I am going to need a... This has changed because I leveled up. Give me one second. Uh-oh. I'm going to need a DC... Is that right? Let me actually look at the numbers real quick. <laughs> I'm going to need a DC 17 dexterity saving throw as I cast Fairy Fire bringing the golden sunlight of air into the area uh, 10 foot around that creature. Okay, yeah, no, it didn't even make it to the correct number of digits on that saving throw. Okay, so now it is illuminated by the golden radiance of the sun. 
And as oh, it's illuminated, holy. you can see its form. The illumination reaches across the thing's body and it spirals down into the water. There's this gargantuan uh, snake. Genie, would you like to be on the shore? Uh, I'm the last person going to be in there, so I'm whatever. Would you, you like to be on the shore? Like, sure. Okay, I telekinetically pull Genie if she doesn't resist off of the boat. Okay. Can't she just pull? She resists. She's still on the boat. And that's the end of my turn. There's a weight limit. Genie yeah, weighs less a than creature. the boat. It's a medium. No. Cre- I don't know if it's a medium creature. But I mean, with a, objects, there's a weight limit. Yeah, with an object, there's a weight limit, but it can only affect a creature. So. But weren't you uh, saying the boat that was like had no resistance to being pulled? We've got uh, creature with Edmont on deck. So I need. Evie, Edmont, Victor, and Genie. Constitution saving throw DC 15, please. Do I need oh. to do this for my familiar or two? Uh, on yeah, if, you're, shoulder. if your familiar is on Victor's shoulder. Uh, that is Can it do cool. less than one damage? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> okay. No more. Uh, that's, that's 21 a... from Evie. Uh, not 11. From, from Genie, I mean. Maybe does Orson need to make that saving throw? No. Orson does not. Okay. That's a 12. <laughs> Evie got a 20 because she used her intelligence instead of her constitution. So what did the other two of you get? 11. 11 12. and 12. And did uh, Ekon have to make the save? No. Orson and Ekon are out of the range. Okay. Uh... My familiar is just dust in the wind. I don't I'll know what this is, it. but he's dead. I'll be using Uncanny Dodge, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, uh, take a plus four. Five to your saving throw, then uh, Edmont, since he's got a makes it a dodge. 16. Yep. Okay. So I just learned that if you just type the dice you want to roll into Google, it'll just roll dice for you. Yes. Yep. I had a dice roller bookmarked for when I had to roll, like, just uh, by way of example, like 10 d8s at once. Uh, by the way, that's going to be 43 cold damage. If you failed the save, you can cut that in half to 21 if you pass the save. All right. Oh, uh, the HP. Use my reaction. The creature's head looms over the back of the canoe and lets loose this cone of frigid breath. Where the breath hits the water, the water explodes and freezes upwards and outwards, rocking the canoe. Uh, I'm going to need those of you in the canoe. Which is just Edmund. Victor, uh, Edmund, and Evie to make a strength saving throw. Victor and Edmund, you can make this at advantage. So it, it was 43 and then, right? 43 the and you can cut that in half if you pass the save. You can cut it in half again if you've got cold resistance. Yes, okay. 43, so 20. That's well, this, eight. Is, uh, this is the save I should have used the intelligence save on. I didn't yeah. know I was going to save twice. Yeah, Brecker, that's kind of a bully move there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I rolled a... Well, it's a 13. 13? Strength is not good. Yeah. How did Victor and Edmont do? Uh, Victor rolled a 12, but with his awesome strength, that's an 11. So an 11, how did Edmont do? 8. 8. The water flash freezes into this cloud of ice crystals, pushing against your frictionless canoe and tipping it upwards and over. Edmonds and Victor, you're able to brace yourselves against the wall to your right. Evie, you've got nothing to brace yourself against. Nonetheless, Victor and Edmund are the ones dumped into the water under the canoe on the shoreline. Oh, what does that affect so, this, so this, this water that flash, flash freezes people that you told me not to touch, mm-hmm. I just touched it, right? Oh, uh, yeah, you're going to have a bad time next time you start your turn. But Evie passed the save, and you two didn't. Even though uh, I gave uh, you a damage. Uh, I no, sure do like the that. Creature? The thing then dismisses itself and disappears under the water. All right, who's next? Uh, we've got Edmont with Evie on deck. Edmont. Sir. 
I've got good news and bad news. What? The good news is, by the time you were tipped over into the water, it had already been frozen. Not frozen solid, like you might ice skate on a pond, but frozen into this very viscous, hyper-cold slush. So you're probably not going to sink and die. However, starting your turn in the water, you're still going to take 22 points of cold damage. Wow, I'm already bloodied. That's a good way to start the session. So, right now, you're on the square of the canoe. So the first square you move is going to count as difficult terrain as you navigate the slush. But you're pretty close to the shore and you're not unconscious. So you got that going for you. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And he's rubbing the parts of his body that were... That got flashed for... That touched the thing. He's like, oh, man. His mom wants to go back into the cube. And you... <laughs> Edmund was never in the cube. Victor was always in the cube. <laughs> We've always been at war. We've with always Delilah's been at war. <laughs> Edmund, you've grown up in frigid winters in North Warren. Like you lived in some of the coldest and remotest parts of the Republic your entire life. You've probably fallen into a frozen lake or two, ice fishing or whatever. That was nothing compared to this. This is supernaturally cold. My martial arts dice still is D6. I need to check. It's what are you two doing key for... points for not a whole, not a whole lot of healing? If I'm if that's right. What are we doing for an action? Uh, I'm need to make sure that I. Yeah, it's still a D6. <laughs> two key points. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to use my. I'm not going to use some quick and healing to do that. Um. Well, no, actually, I probably should. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to do that. D6 plus proficiency uh, healing for uh, quick and healing on uh, on myself. Edmont breathes in deep and regains nine hit points. All right. That's about half of the cold damage you just took. Yeah. Moving or staying put? Uh, I am pushing myself up against the wall here. Sure. I've got Evie with Genie on deck. Evie, you did not fall into the water. You are still in the canoe, but the canoe is like partially capsized, and it's no longer sitting in the water like it wasn't like it was a moment ago. It's now sitting in this semi-slush ice crystal soup underneath you. And I pull Victor out without also touching the horrifyingly cold water. Uh, yeah, that's fine. If you want to, it's going to cost double movement to pull him out. But I'm, I don't have um, the additional. Um, no, but it's going to cost you 10 dream. feet of movement to drag him five feet is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, uh, Victor, do you consent to being moved? Yeah. Okay. So I assume Victor is like right here. In the water? Yeah, just put yourself and Victor on what squares you want to occupy. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I just pull Victor out. Uh, Victor like avoids this. taking cold damage, for he did not start his movement in the ice. And are you taking an action? Um, I mean, the creature's gone. The creature's not gone. Now. The creature went back down under the water. Okay, well, uh, well I can't see oh, him, so I can't, like, task him. With, with uh, fairy fire causing ten feet of dim light to shut off it, can we tell where it is, or is it that too deep under the water? Oh, yeah, no, it's got fairy fire, so if you look out over the water, uh, I'm going to say it would only be, like, passive perception ten, because it's, it's self-illuminating at this point. And, yeah, you can just see what looks like a golden coil just beneath the surface of the water. Okay, well, um, I'm going to get out of this cluster so that it doesn't just breathe on us all again. 20, 25, 30. I'll just stand here. Okay. And Evie will start, like, yelling, like, you know, get Edmund and Victor warmed up immediately or get the canoe out of the water. But um, I use my action. Uh, so I think that's it for me. All right, who's next? Uh, let's see here. After Evie, we've got Genie with Victor on deck. Uh, does it look like the uh, canoe is in danger of sinking? Looks like it wouldn't be possible for the canoe to sink because it's sitting on this 
icy slush rather than water itself. And the canoe is already pretty buoyant. The canoe itself okay. looks like it's in no state of disrepair. Okay, so Genie's uh, going to say canoe will be fine by itself. So 5, 5 10, 15, 20. So Genie's going to come over here. Okay. And she is going to... Uh... So from that position, you can see where the sandy beach kind of ends, maybe 15 or 20 feet beyond the shoreline. And it looks like there's cave entrances at a couple places nearby. All right. Uh, are we gonna? Are we running or fighting? Genie well, asked. We can't fight it at the moment. You can't see it. No, you can see it. Well, I don't have any way to fight it. Yeah, you can see it down underneath the water because it's been fairy fired. All right, uh, Genie is going to use her noble. We were playing our Saturday game at one point. And somebody was like, oh, fairy fire is basically just like throwing glitter at somebody. And then one of yeah. our other players who doesn't have children said, yeah, but fairy fire doesn't come off in the water. And then all of the parents immediately went, neither does <laughs> fucking glitter. I mean, glitter dust is the better version of fairy fire. Right. Because <laughs> it also blinds things. Uh... I remember one time many years ago in McDull's campaign, he had an invisible enemy attacking us and I used glitter dust on him and it turned out to be a vampire and he was very angry with me after that. <laughs> I, I did not forgive Solitaire for a long time. After he did TPK us in that encounter, by the way. If you recall, <laughs> this, this like magical police in Dunfoss carried around pockets full of magical glitter for exactly yeah. that reason. Yeah, no, you're right. It's just police officers. Pocket sand! <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to... Uh, hold an action to cast a firebolt on the creature when it surfaces. That's a cantrip, yes? Yes. Okay. Oh, Brickard, would an evasion have applied to that to that breath weapon? Uh, oh, yeah. no, dexterity save. Never mind. Oh, no, it was a constitution Victor. save, not a dex save. Yeah. yeah. So, never mind. We got uh, Victor with Orson on deck. Okay. So... The nice thing about Victor's daggers is that they're not actual physical objects. So does that mean they should have no issue hitting this thing under the water? I'll give it partial cover because you're attacking something down in the water with a weapon that was not designed to travel through the water. But yeah, it's going to enjoy a plus two AC to your attack. But you can you can <laughs> see it and it's, in, it's within range of your attack. And you okay. get advantage. <laughs> and you have advantage. Yeah, have advantage. advantage. <laughs> you could still snag a sneak attack out of it. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so yeah, Victor is going to uh, curse at this thing and fling a psionic dagger. Okay. I'm not sure what flavor of dagger would do the most damage to this thing. Uh, that is a 16 hit. Your daggers are not physical objects at all, right? That is correct. Uh, 16 does not hit. Sad face. I mean, you still got your offhand. I do. And you're not you're not steady aiming, so. I feel like I should hide for all the good that we'll do. Uh, yeah, no, I guess we're gonna offhand it. Okay. Still good to manage on an offhand, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's an attack roll. It's very far. Air fire lasts forever. Okay, well, how about a 25? 25 will hit. Or 26. Until, until uh, Ed, Econ gets slapped. Yay, sneak attack damage. Did you add your uh, Hunter's Mark? Because you did. I the did. Dollar. Okay, cool. Uh, please enjoy 24 points of psionic damage. Okay. And yeah, you see the coil of the thing beneath the water spaz out for a moment as your dagger impacts what you think is the thing's head. You can't tell its head from its tail because you're just going to look at the, the, the glow as it moves. Are right, moving or staying put? Uh, probably going to move. Is this circle in front of me like any sort of like rock pillar that could be hidden behind? No, it's just part of the uh, texture of the ground.
hiding spaces are not uh, quite plentiful. Do you have a do you have a light source, Victor? Um, I guess it'd be whatever Genie's light source is. Okay, well, I've already shown the extent of hers, yeah. so you can't see anything beyond that point then. Yeah. All right. He just yells, right out. Who's next? Uh, that would be Ekon. So, first of all, I would like to move. Because I agree, spreading out is a good idea. Uh, who is the most hurt right now? Is anyone bloodied? Uh, I think that might actually be Edmont. Victor is Edmont, yeah. Vic, yeah, Victor's almost bloody, not quite though. Okay, Edmont. Uh, I'm at 31. Edmont's probably taking more than that. 34, 57. Yeah. So. Uh, Edmont, we. Uh, Ergon speaks a word of prayer to air. And then this is a healing word with a third level slot because fuck this thing. Wow. <laughs> also, I've used most of my first level slots, uh, so that's. 12 healing as a bonus action. Oh, thank you. Thank you, brother. 12 and healing then, damage. Uh... <laughs> yes, 12 healing damage. And then I already in action. Um, if I get, if this thing surfaces off of the water, I'm going to cast Sacred Flame at it. Okay. So, Ekon says another prayer, holds his hands in front of him, and the sparkling fire of air begins to shear off of them as he concentrates on the spell. That's it for Ekon. Got green thing with Edmont on deck. Okay, nobody standing within five feet of the canoe. Uh, two of you have held actions when the thing does surface here. You're going to need yeah. a DC 17 reflex saving throw. Uh, and it does reflex not get that any throw. benefits of cover from this. Well, it wouldn't anyway, because it's poking its head out of the water now. Sure. Okay, I guess well, I, I should just start frying that's it out of the water. A, that's a crit. I have an 11 on the deck save and apparently a critical nope. hit firebolt coming my way. Yes. So you're going to first of all enjoy 16 radiant damage. Ow. Oh no. Oh no. Wait. I. Oh no. It's it's 21. I got the feature that I had my whiz last level. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Cantrips. Uh. 32. Fire to Lucius over 32? Here. What? Critical hit on a firebolt. Yeah, this thing. These firebolts are super awesome. The thing is bloody as you guys just let loose with radiant fire. Uh, I think the spells combine and explode. It was awesome to see. And the thing grabs the canoe and disappears back under the water. And you can still see it because it's still illuminated. And you can also see your canoe pulled under as well. I'm going to need you to teleport that canoe later. So somebody told me, I'm not going to say who it was, but somebody told me that that canoe would be fine. Well, I didn't expect, I told you it was going to be fine. I didn't expect it to come over and grab it. To be clear, it still looks fine. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> That's a very uh, debatable with Evie on deck. Well, it decided to pike off without... So much as a how do you do, so Edmont really can't do much at the moment. Um, so you can hold an action to shoot it with your bow. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that. That sounds like a that sounds like a, a, a perfectly cromulent idea. So ready an action to fire your bow at it if it surfaces again. Yep, right. and I am. Going to key point dodge besides. Won't help me if he uses his breath I, weapon. Yeah, well, I mean, if he decides to snap at me, then. All right, who's next? Then there we go. Uh, next up, we've got Evie with Genie on deck. Evie, fix it. It still has Fairy Fire, yes? It does. Oh, yeah. All right. Until Edmont get, until Ekon gets slapped. So you can see the shape of it moving around under the water. It looks like it's dragging the canoe downward and away from you. Okay, well, my daggers are not going to reach it. So I use word of command. I say, Victor, kill it now. And I get, and let Victor make one attack. Okay. And that'll be at advantage because it's uh, fear fired. It's very fired. That uh, is a 27 hit. Yeah, sure does. 
Uh, so, do I get a sneak attack on this thing again? Yeah, because yeah, you've got advantage, did, yeah. but not disadvantage. Okay. I've granted it's a partial not... cover, but that's not disadvantage. Yep. That did spend your reaction, by the way. So you can't like, any dodge, but yeah. That's only 22. All right. So, only which... 22, he says. I'm going to have to uncanny dodge a dead thing. Yeah, no joke. It's mitigating future damage. So, Victor, you fling out a psionic dagger down through the water, and you're considerably further away from it now, but you can still see the glow of it. And the thing doesn't stop moving. But a couple seconds after you fling the dagger, you realize that attacking it has loosened its grip on the canoe. And with a loud sploosh, the canoe pops back up to the top of the water. And everywhere it splashes outward, it flash freezes the area around into the ice crystal slush. So the canoe is now upside down out here on the water, which is actually more of a slush. And the creature is still moving. 10 or 20 feet below the surface. They told you, fine. Evie, moving or staying put? I'll just, I'll move here, I guess, so that we're a little more spread out. It's a nice corner. Nice corner. Yeah, it is a nice a corner. a genie with Victor on deck. Uh-huh. Uh, no. I don't really think that a firebolt is going to go through the water. I would Lightning give the thing light. partial cover, and I would probably give it resistance to fire damage being underwater. Right. How far away is it? It's, it's, so it's, 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 it's as it's far as that... you see. It's about 10 or 20 feet, 10 to 20 feet below the surface. Okay, yeah, all right, cool. Uh... Yeah, I, I guess I'll just shoot another firebolt at it. That seems fine. Okay. Even at resistance, that's... Yeah, I'm going to give it resistance to fire damage because it's swimming around underwater. Does a... So that's a plus nine. Does a 25 hit? It does. Okay. Man, I watered this monster down and now I realize that I should not have. Uh, So that's 19 points of fire damage. Which it can which cut in half? Cut. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and the thing is still moving down there. You see your fire bolt... Because uh, the firebolt is more or less a physical object. You're actually creating a jet of fire and throwing it through the air. And it leaves this bizarre crystal trail as it flash freezes and then sublimates the water as it goes. So it's this bizarre jet of steam rising up out of the slush where your fireball, your fireball has gone down into the water. And for a few moments you can even see the trail like a bullet through ballistics gel. Neat. Yeah, that's cool. Moving or staying put? Uh, staying put. Okay. Got uh, Victor with Orson on deck. Victor, glaring down at this thing that tried to strand us, will flash his daggers to lightning damage. Okay. And attack. Uh, does a 24 hit? That'll hit. Can you be the it's guy? Far, it's very far the best level one spell or not. <laughs> it probably is. I mean, it's pretty good. I think pretty damn good. I think sleep is better against like CR1 opponents, but fairy fire stays oh. useful forever. Please enjoy 24, which turns into 48 if it becomes vulnerable to lightning. And that's enough. As Victor flings his dagger down, the thing finally stops moving. And then after a few moments, the body of it bobs to the surface. And in the places it does, it freezes the surface of the water. Which gives you... Yeah, I'm in an electric eel. This kind of slush effect stretching out. Here. It almost looks like the same row of shoals as when you first paddled your canoe up to this point, except now it's in this different configuration. Did we just did we just sandworm? 
Is this now a bridge to the other side of the lake? Suddenly a bear jumps out of the lake and steals all your gold. <laughs> we capture it. And, can we capture it and release it on the boss of the dungeon for like 20, for like a thousand points of damage? No. Oh. Yeah, right. we would need a ranger. I'm still looking, still, look, still rubbing parts of his body that got, that got flash frozen. And he's like, what the hell was all that about? The so, first uh, thing Evie says is, Goddamn useless divination spell. It said wheel or woe or wheel and woe. There is no option for snake. There should definitely be a wheel, <laughs> woe, or snake. I think that's... Well, hopefully the think... woe is over. <laughs> uh, I, I can, can you teleport a grappling hook over so we can get the boat? Uh, I've got 30 feet on Mage Hand. 5, 10, yeah. Okay. If you have something. Uh, but first, I would like to take my light source and actually sweep it across with telekinesis. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, basically, Let's make sure there was a cure here. All right. I'm going to use my noble slot. Okay. To summon my protector turret. So, everybody come in for our, uh, for our family huddle. Sweeping the light source around. You're on this. Uh, like I said, it's a more sandy beach. Than stone, but you got two passages leading into these cave walls, both of which look like they start ascending in crude stairs carved directly into the rock. Uh, the beach ends about 60 feet away. No, these are five foot squares. That's about 30 feet away in this direction. And then, yeah, I'll bring a grappling hook over to the boat if uh, Victor has one. So the difficulty with the grappling hook is anywhere that the rope you're sending over crosses the water, it's going to freeze the water. And you're going to have to try to drag the boat through this slush. Is that the intended goal? Uh, yes. Okay. Make sure we don't tear our canoe apart. I'll say realistically two of you can pull this rope in. It's going to be require a strength athletics check. Oh, that's Orson's nominate. job. Yeah, uh, Orson Evie Victor, I think. Evie Make nominates job. Orson. Okay. So Orson uh, can make a strength athletics check at advantage if Victor is also assisting. Yeah. Uh, okay, his athletics help. is plus... Uh, go ahead and take your guidance, because I don't have seven. a fire to concentrate on anymore, anymore. So Yay! So I'm going to roll a... D I'm, uh, after 48 seconds... We all get 13 tenths of points. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, that is a 27 plus a d4. So that's a 31 on athletics. And that yeah. was without that, by the way, that was without rolling the advantage because I rolled a 20. You guys pull the canoe over. And at this point, pretty much this entire part of the subterranean lake. The surface of it is just crisscrossed with this slush, just meanderingly bobbing up and down. Mm -hmm. And the canoe doesn't look like it's any worse for wear. It looks like the creature grabbed it uh, in its mouth, but didn't actually damage it at all. I feel like we should take this creature and skin it. You want to? You want to go into there? the water? You're uh, you're more than welcome to. I'm gonna. Try and pull the canoe up further on the shore and then realize I have five strength and let Orson do it. Well, it's a frictionless canoe, so you have no difficulty pulling oh. it. And it's a sandy oh, really? beach, so yeah. That's true. Okay. Yeah, I'll flip it over and pull it up a bit so it doesn't Who get still drug needs off healing? by something else that lives under the water. Well, Victor could use a little bit of heal. Right. Everybody did get 13 tip hit points. So okay, well, I will, give, I will give Victor 10 actual hit points. It says, Victor, good work. Thanks. I just killed it, just like you said. Slap him on, slap him on the ass. Good, good hustle. Hit <laughs> hit points. Evie's just glad that he actually looks. These are the stairs in both directions. Yes. Am I reading this right? Correct. Uh, uh, do we have a way that we normally decide which way to go as a family? Well, hold on. Flip a coin. Let's go right. Adventurers, good adventurers, do go left. Yes. Right. Is investigators to go right, right. I've heard. So, I said we flip a coin. I don't have a coin, I have a right. prism. Yeah, let's go this way. Hang on. Someone with <laughs> light needs to go first. Here, oh, wait. yeah, I'll go in front. 
okay. Climbing up these first stairs here. Uh, at first, they're a little steeper than traditional stairs would be. And then after you climb 10 or 12 of them, they become considerably steeper to the point where you actually have to climb using your arms and pulling yourself up. And you realize you're not so much ascending a staircase as you are climbing a very steep slope. That goes on for a good while. Until you reach a point where it dead ends. What is... You've got a light source, yes? What's your passive perception? Might be 18 now, because I leveled up. It's 19 now. 19 oh, yeah. passive perception. So, yeah. it looks like a dead end, but you have a light source, and you can see where the light is shining through cracks in the stone in front of and above you, and you realize that the entryway forward has been jammed up with rocks. It doesn't look like it's been a rock slide from on the other side. Rather, you see evidence that the rocks were placed here from below. And in just the places you would expect to see them, here and there, you see metal rods on either side supporting two of the rocks. Something tells you that pulling these rods out of the way will cause the entire obstruction to fall down the chute. The chute we're all standing in? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't do that. Maybe we should yeah. go the other way. Let's check out what is the other way first. Yeah, let's not do the death trap first. Let's see How much what rope else, do you have, Victor? What our other options are. How much what? Rope do you have? Rope? 50 feet. Okay. I have rope, too. We all probably uh, have, have rope. Well, we can tie a rope around it and pull it from way back here, yes. Not a bad idea. Bear with me just one second. I still think there's a good chance that that just um, stops up the chute. Well, Coming up the other thing. stairs. Mostly vertical. At the top of the stairs, there are three things of note in this room. The first is that... Uh, I wonder all the way in there. As you come up, there's actually, most of the room is this ledge that the stairs kind of climb up and then switch back and climb up to. At the top of this stair, looking into the room, most of the room is filled with what looks like a gargantuan fire pit filled with ash and debris. The second thing of note is that there are holes drilled into the wall behind you. I will go ahead and draw a couple of these with the pencil tool. Kind of drilled into the walls behind you. The third thing is you actually see a thin stripe of moonlight illuminating the back wall of this ashen pit. But the source of where the light's coming in? It just looks like moonlight is shining down from above in the back half of the cave. Guys, yeah, we got some oh. potential trap holes here. Don't stand in front of them. Good to know. Yeah, like, can Victor investigate these holes to see if there's anything? You can, inside but can first, let's roll some initiative, because Edmund just stepped on the magic square. <laughs> Good job, Edmund. Is there a cube? <laughs> you found a cube. I hope it's a cube. I actually kind of hope it's a cube, too. <laughs> it's the hey, losers, cube. get out of my way. I'm up here. I'm up here on initiative. All right, so... Oh, look at you. Here, and Ed... Mark. Good, you'll act before the cube. I like acting before the cube. That's a good idea. That's a good situation to be in. Edmund. Sir. And Ekin, I guess, who is right behind you. You're crossing this fire pit, and obviously there hasn't been a fire here lit in... Who knows how long? There's no actual heat in this room. It's as bitter cold as everywhere else in the complex. But the ash is fairly deep. So you sink about half an inch into your boots as you're moving across. As you cross to the back of the room, both of you feel shifting under your feet as the ash splits aside and forms up into two humanoid monsters, one on either side of the pit. 
I'll say nobody's surprised at this point. Is this line a, a ledge? Yes. So if you want to yeah. get up, they had to. They, they had went, to come I down. See where they, I see they went around. Yeah. How how high up is the ledge? Yeah, that was my next question. Uh, probably ten feet from where Ekin is standing to where Genie is standing. Ten feet okay. vertically. Okay. Uh, we've got Edmont with Victor on deck. Shift back over here, and uh, let's go ahead and give this guy some vitamin K. Vitamin K. Does a 14 hit? Uh, 14 does hit. Okay. Uh, eight points bludgeoning damage. And you're magical monk, monk punches at this level, yes? Yeah, I have magical monk punches so, now. Eight points. Um, let's go ahead and do an extra, do an extra attack. Let's let's let, let's do some AC sussing. That's an eight to hit. An eight does not hit. I don't know why I rolled a d six. Uh, key point for flurry of blows. Twenty one to hit. Twenty one will hit. Uh, you're looking at eight points bludgeoning damage, and the dark powers request a Constitution saving throw. Okay. I got a thirteen on the con. That passes. Okay. Just barely. Uh, next, second attack from flurry of blows. Does a fifteen hit? Fifteen does hit. And uh, at six points bludgeoning damage. Okay. And could he please make me that Constitution saving throw one more time? <laughs> no, he cannot. Okay, then he is stunned until the end of my next turn. All right. And I'm moving or staying put? I'm good there. Okay, who's next? Got uh, Victor with uh, Red Token on deck. Victor, you may use your action to start investigating the holes if you like. Um, <laughs> He's just going to give an oh fuck and reactively throw a dagger at this thing that just appeared. Okay. Guess what? You have advantage. Oh, I do. Bonus action first, though, is going to be a transfer hunter's mark. Okay. Uh, that's a natural 20. <laughs> so that's a critical hit on your sneak attack. With hundred. You're points. welcome, Victor. Um, I rolled dice twice, right? No, no, no. You, All the dice, you rolled, yeah. You rolled, you rolled, go get. Yeah, yeah I need six more dice. dice. Yeah. You gotta do it correctly. <laughs> yes. This, this is, this is table tradition. This is how we do it here at this table. I, wish, I really wish out, to great critical. Chris is the first player I had ever known who did not want to use dice at the table. We all sat down to play D&D one time, and he told me that he had programmed dice into his graphing calculator. That's a <laughs> lot of sixes. <laughs> See, isn't that so much more satisfying? Um, that's... If I only add my, my dex modifier once, then it's 50. 50? Okay. Yeah, Thank you, added twice. Oh, no, then 50 you know. No, you only got it once. No, only once. Yeah, it's only once. 50. Yeah, the thing is badly bloodied at this point. By bloodied, um, I mean, you guys have all done some grilling. Like, you've had a big grill filled with cold ash that something's fallen into, and it kicks up that cloud of ash that makes everybody cough. That's exactly what yeah. happens. You're beating on this thing. Uh, and it looks more like a, it still looks like it's a humanoid creature, but a lot of the ash has crumbled away. And Victor, moving or staying put? Um, so the, these holes are like head level. Uh, they're, they vary in height. The highest one is like part way up your chest. Maybe I guess the, the question would be if, if I, can I use like half my movement to crawl or like crawl underneath them? Yeah, you yeah. can go prone and then move at half speed. Okay. And then stand up on the other side. Sure. It costs, uh, half your movement to stand up. That's fine. Five. That's just just enough. Okay, so you're gonna solid sneak your way over to the. Yeah, because Victor doesn't trust holes in walls. Okay. Oh, they were not made for you. Who's next? 
Red token. It's uh, red tokens. Okay. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Red token with Eevee on deck. Uh, Edmund, you're not dodging, are you? No, sir. Hoping it will take this thing out before it got a chance to do a thing to me, but I have a it's 13 fine. to hit. 13 does not hit, sir. And a 23 to hit. That'll hit. Oh, I'm sorry. That's this one here because the other one's stunned. Right. You. Oh, oh, oh okay. Okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Okay. Just going to bully me. I see. I see. No, that makes sense. Oh, I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't here last time. That's fair. I gotta get my. I gotta get my. Gotta go through the spanking machine. Edmund, I've got good news and bad news. And what's the good news? Neutral news. The neutral news is you're going to take eleven points of bludgeoning damage as the thing okay. steps forward, and the ash solidifies around one of its giant hands. It comes down. The first attack misses you. The second attack impacts for eleven points. The good news is it's as it does MVP. this. Its entire arm, from the joint all the way up to this sledgehammer fist, ignites into flame. Oh, spicy. And that's good that's news, good because news. you're super cold, because you were in the in the drink. The bad news yeah. is it's still going to go ahead and do five points of fire damage to you. Oh, no more temp HP. So for just a moment, the ash of its arm ignites, illuminating the whole room. And as it smashes down into Edmund, the flames die away as quickly as they ignited. The other one is stunned, so it doesn't do anything except stand there with missing limbs and half a head, etc. And, uh, uh, and, and Eevee and with ultimately. green token on deck. Oh, there's no more green token. You guys killed that green token. Uh, it's uh, Ekon. No, it's Eevee. 15, 20, 25. Can I attack this creature from where I'm standing? With what? With a thrown dagger? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You have advantage. Yep. I'm just going to try to finish that one off. Oh. It's you have advantage, you better. It. Oh, well, I rolled a 20, so it doesn't matter. It's like the fifth crit. <laughs> Is that an at 20 again? Yeah. Really? Guys are making well, my... mince meat out of these monsters. <laughs> well, my crits are not as impressive as Victor's, but it'll still be pretty nice. I guess I got to follow the tradition. I need you to pull a whole bunch of dice. I have, oh, I have yeah. some extras here you can borrow. By the way, I've I've revealed enough of this map that I can <laughs> show the part where we where I downloaded it from. Thank you, DysonLogos.com. Yeah, nice map. I don't uh, think I actually found this map on their Patreon, which so, hopefully doesn't mean that somebody is stealing the stuff from their Patreon and uploading it elsewhere. I hope that's. I hope it's just something that he's shared somewhere else. But it looks like you've kind of reversed Victor's Frankenstein crit. two nap two maps together here. Yes, the two, from two different sources. <laughs> okay, so even on a crit, Evie does twenty four points of damage. That's respectable. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's more than Vic. That's what Victor does on a regular hit. Yeah, but Victor's but... a one trick pony, and Evie has lots of tricks. Yeah, Evie has so many tricks. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, just because I roll bad. That's what. That's the point I'm trying to make. Just rolled a crit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> all right. Is it still alive? No. Oh, yes, okay. it is. I'm sorry. Uh, you fling your dagger at it, and looking extremely bloodied and extremely stunned, having the worst day of its life. And it's only been alive for like 18 seconds, so. <laughs> Let's see if I can make it even worse. Uh, bonus action, throw a second dagger. Sure. See if I, well, let's see if I crit again. No, but that's uh, 19 to hit. 19 will hit. All right. That's, it takes four more damage. And that, at last, is enough. And the only part of this creature that was not comprised of just ash from the floor, as it comes completely unhinged and collapses down into just a cloud of acrid ash, is a human skull, badly charred, that just falls into a puff of ash on the floor at Edmont's feet as you kill the thing. <laughs> 